Hi, welcome to Let's Get Writing. I'm your host, Katherine Taylor. Let's Get Writing is available each week on my Facebook page, Katherine Taylor Media. And all shows are permanently hosted on my YouTube channel at Katherine Taylor TV. And of course, if you like your content on the go, they are also available as podcasts on Podbean or any of your favorite podcast channels. So never miss another episode. You can sign up, you can subscribe, and we'll always let you know when there's new content up, which is pretty well every week. And also, I really do love your feedback and appreciate your comments and ideas. So share them, and I'd love to hear from you. Now, on with the show. My guest today on Let's Get Writing is Paul David Power, who has spent the past 25 years working as a writer, playwright, actor, and director. He has been named a finalist for the 2021 Governor General's Literary Awards in the drama category for his newly published play, Crippled, which I have a copy of here. And Paul is currently the artistic director of his own Newfoundland-based company, Power Productions, a professional theater company dedicated to the development of works Um, and artists with a focus on the disabled, deaf, and mad arts domain. So I'm going to bring Paul up into the screen and introduce him to you if you don't already know him. He knows so many people. Hi, Paul. Hi there. Hi. (laughs) Ah, okay. (laughs) You never know with technology if you're going to hear me or not, but you're out there in St. John's. I'm here in Grand Falls, Windsor. We are in Newfoundland, for those of you who may not be here, which is an amazing place, an amazing creative place. And Paul is an amazing creative um, person here working on the island. So, Paul, welcome to Let's Get Writing Again. It was, I think, I want to say over a year ago, and I'm sure it was, you were on tour with your play going across the island. How long ago was that? You're right. That was um, a little over a year ago before before the pandemic hit. We had finished just a, a cross Newfoundland tour. Yeah, exactly. And I had gone to see the show and then you came into the Rogers TV studio and we actually celebrated your birthday <laughs> on the show. You did. <laughs> um, that's a funny was, story. Was... My, my, <laughs> my, my castmate, um, I wouldn't tell them the actual date of my birthday, which is March 2nd. And um because of that, they celebrated my birthday every day we were on tour, which was like two weeks. And every day they'd put me on the spot in some restaurant or something with a birthday cake and candles. Free wow. cake. <laughs> I mean, you gotta, you gotta love it. Like that's what happens when you work in theater and if people have an experience, you become family and, and you become tortured like we torture members of our family. <laughs> Just that's the right. way it goes. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Anyway, I'm so glad to have you back. And I'm very, very excited. And I think we're all proud of you. Um, You being named a finalist for the 2021 Governor General's Literary Awards in the drama category um, for your for your newly published play. But I just have to ask you, I mean, that is such an honor. And, you know, what is what does this mean to you? What's important about this to you? Uh, Well, it was. um, Thank you. Yeah, it was a complete surprise. I didn't. It, it wasn't even on my radar, <laughs> and um, uh, actually, uh, a lot of people knew before I did. And uh, I started getting um, a lot of a lot of emails and that congratulations yesterday morning. And I was like, "What are they talking about?" And uh, then I did see the news release and I uh, got formally contacted. Um, it's a real um, honor. Um, it's a real honor when anyone uh, decides to uh, highlight your work. Um, and, and, and it's a validation, I guess, um, that that I did a good job in telling the story that I wanted to tell. Um, and then to be put in a category with with other amazing, uh, accomplished writers um, is it's a uh, it's humbling. It's um, it's really great. And I'm really excited that, you know, Newfoundland is in there. You know, I'm, I'm very proud Newfoundlander and uh, that our, our, our province is represented in there. So um all that all that means a lot to me 
Yeah, I can only imagine. And if, I mean, if you think of the play and in the in the book being pub published right at this time as well, and you know how much of you has gone into that work. And I know that from having done uh, a workshop with you. Um, oh, it's your story, or I'm trying to think That's of the name it. of it. Watch now. your Everyone, story. Watch your story. <laughs> where you worked with us and helped us take an idea or something in our life and really bring that to life like to find the deeper aspects of it. And that's what I see in your play uh, in crippled in, you know, in the writing of it. And I want you to talk about that a bit, what that particular play, um, you know, means to you, what it was for you to write that. Um, I, I call it, um, I call it a journey, you know, um, the play for those who don't know is about, um, it's about grief and it's really um it's really a love story um so in 2013 uh my partner jonathan uh suddenly passed away uh, unexpectedly and um uh we were together for uh nine years and um obviously uh, it was a great loss for me an unexpected loss and uh i call grief a journey as, as well and for the first couple of years it was it was just it was just surviving, you know, um, and, and trying to find uh, purpose in life and, and having to reinvent myself because, um, well, Jonathan wasn't there. And then, you know, we were sort of just each other's worlds. And um, as a writer or an artist, um, I, I always find myself trying to express my emotions and whatever through artwork, whether it's, you know, I remember when, uh, first off, I, I wrote a lot of bad poetry and um drawing and, and that sort of thing. And at one point I, I got to uh, back to my playwriting and uh, I got to express what I wanted to express through my writing. But but the main catalyst was of it was um, I didn't get to say goodbye uh, to Jonathan because uh, uh, his passing happened so suddenly. And um, I, I needed to create a vehicle to do that. and. Um, playwriting is all about dialogue. And so I got to create a dialogue with Jonathan and be able to say what I wanted to say to him if, if he was here or, and, uh, and I um, tried to think, what would he say to me if he was here um, and, and knowing all the circumstances. And I found that um, really, really therapeutic. And it was an artistic journey. I, I wrote the first draft. And like I said, I wanted to say what I wanted to say. I wanted Jonathan to say what he wanted to say. And, and that was great. And I did it. And it was it was 11 pages. And I was going to give it up then. I was like, well, there's not a play here. It's like, I don't have anything to write. But uh, Robert Shea, great, great writer and artist here in Newfoundland. He, uh, he was my dramaturge, my editor, what we call that dramaturge and uh, playwriting. Um, he really pushed me to uh, explore my emotions, explore history, explore my identity. So what I started off as a therapeutic way uh, to grieve turned into a, a full length play with uh, visiting many dimensions that I didn't even know I had. But um, that's the that's the amazing thing about writing. Um, I find you learn a lot about yourself, your attitudes and other people through writing that you don't learn just, you know, walking through day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. And I think all of those things, but I also think vulnerability plays a part in writing too. As writers, when you put your personal story out there, which you're so I attached to the story, did you feel any anxiety or unsure when you did that? Yeah, it's, it's been a real, real experience in that way too. It is, it, I mean, most of it is my, my life, my story, and uh, about my grief and and that sort of thing. And um, yeah, uh, writing it was very therapeutic, um, very um, safe though, because I have a really good relationship with Robert and then the people working on the play. Um, for those who don't know, you know, we also uh, were on tour with it and I performed in it along with some great artists who I call friends. So it's that supportive environment. But yeah, when you go in front of an audience and now as a publication through Breakwater Books, um, it's for anybody mm -hmm. to see. And uh, I did through, go through, um, we were on tour for a couple of years with the play and uh, every night performing that. And even, even now, interviews and everything, talking about it, it's sort of putting yourself out there 
um, all the time. And, um, you know, there's some days I'm like, I, I don't want to go there and, and but you have to perform. Right. And, um, uh, I'm learning how, how to balance that too, you know? And, um, but, uh, the best thing about mental health, I guess. And, and when you're, you're facing issues is, is talking about it, like talking about it really helps mm -hmm. along, mm -hmm. along with the writing. Well, you yourself, you are a person who has lived your life disabled. And I, and I think you brought that right there on the cover of the book. You know, you put it out in a way that everyone goes, oh, are they going to be uncomfortable just to see this? Or, you know, you put it out there. So tell me about your choice of title and and what that meant to the overall play itself. Um, I, I'm a child of the 70s, um, for one thing. And you, you had to remember back then, uh, we weren't as educated and uh, mm -hmm. educated in diversity as we are now. And there was different terminology used. And um, when I was born in the 70s and uh, doctors and uh, parents or whoever, the term crippled was used. And it, it's in my play um, that I remember that that term being used in my in my early days. And uh, how, as years went by, how um, negative that term has turned out to be, and uh, how it could have an impact on um, on your self worth, and 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 you know these horrible labels we, we give everybody, and that we we, we um, mm -hmm. carry within us uh, and memories of it. Um, but along with um, the disability component and the um, uh, word crippled. Um, there was also um, the emotional part of uh, my character, uh, Tony, uh, being crippled by grief. Uh, when the play opens, um, Tony mm -hmm. doesn't, basically he doesn't want to live anymore. You know, he can't find purpose in life. And um, so he, he's crippled um, in the way of he can't move on from his grief because Tony's lost his partner, as Paul lost his partner. As well, um, when, when I find when you're faced with something so traumatic and so challenging in life, it tends to play on our uh, insecurities. And if we let ourselves, uh, we can go back and think of every single negative thing in our lives, you know, and that, that, that's part of, a, part of a mental health challenges, you know, if we, if we go that way. And it can be a very, very dark road. And, um, of course, the... Um, the word crippled comes back to Tony's mind and his self-worth and he has no purpose now because his partner passed away. And so it's that, um, that analogy that, you know, I'm just, I'm just a cripple calling himself the most derogatory name that he can. And, um, it goes hand in hand with the mm -hmm. emotional cripple. Yeah. And, it, and it's just, it's a strong title and it does really, encapsulate everything that you have in that in that play um so so much and i just i also think that you know you have brought to the theater something that we don't always see you yourself performing we know that there's not diversity there hasn't been a history of diversity in theater um you know in that whole arena whether you're backstage on stage and i think are you hoping to make it more inclusive are you wanting to bring a change to that world and i think definitely you're doing it you're doing it but is that important to you it is important to me and i, I struggled with that for a while recently actually i wrote an article on it but um it was about am i an artist or am, am i am i an advocate right and um mm -hmm. uh, definitely um i wanted to do a play um that called for uh, an artist, an actor who identifies as physically disabled. And, um, you know, if you look in the uh, in the front of the book, we have like, you know, uh, history of production and what what uh, if someone wants to produce this play, what's required. And one of the things stipulated at the beginning of the book is that the character, Tony, um, the, my character, uh, um, the character that Paul is, that, uh, that resembles Paul, um, the actor has to have a physically physical disability, you know, and um, I think it's really important. Number one, because um, I think it would be a truthful performance because not, you know, it's a lived experience. But number two, um, it allows for other theater companies, other parts of the world to 
look for that artist who identifies as a disability. And it's so cool to have a character, you know, it's flipping the whatever, you know, most casting people and that, you know, are looking for the six foot blonde, whatever. <laughs> but um, this one is, it challenges the director or the casting director to um, be truthful to the script, be truthful to the experience and give that opportunity to someone else who identifies with a physical disability. It also says in the book too, um, there's a little permission um, for whoever's casted. Uh, there's some uh, descriptions in some of the text of Tony's disability, which reflects my disability of leg braces and crutches. But it says in, in the script, the printed copy that um, directors may change the text a little bit to accommodate whatever the physical disability is of that person playing Tony in the future. Um, so I think that's really important. And I don't see a lot of plays. There are some that call for that specific physical disability. I also wanted to guard against, you know, uh, casting um, someone who does not have a disability. Um, just for that truthful experience, I guess, and um, making sure that the play is done correctly and is um, it keeps with the integrity of the play. Um, through the years, I've been uh, involved in a lot of different arts projects and symposiums and conferences and that that um, are, are looking at the, the role of disability in our arts and uh, the representation. And um, I'm actually working right now on a uh, the first Atlantic, Atlantic Canada symposium for artists with disabilities. Um, and uh, this is the first time in Atlantic Canada we've done this and having sort of a, a collaborative uh, uh, effort. And uh, that's because whether we like it or not, the representation of persons with disabilities is still behind the times when it comes to, uh, comes to the arts and it's important. And I don't always um, set out to be the advocate, but uh, I find there's just strength in being present, uh, strength in just sharing my stories, which just happens to reflect my identity as a person with a disability. Um, and I think that we need more of that, you know? It doesn't have to be um, someone up on a soapbox heralding um, disability. Uh, stories don't have to be always about the expectation of it's someone overcoming a disability, as if disability, disability was something bad that has to be overcome. Um, that inspiring, you know, cheesy, good for you attitude. Um, which is what people expect, I think, when it comes to disabled stories. I, I know when they were doing reviews of the production of Crippled, um, every single reviewer uh, um, had, had the line uh, along the lines of something like, it's not what I expected. It's like they went in with, um, because the play was called Crippled, I guess, went in with the expectation mm -hmm. that this is going to be, be, be about, you know, the classic disability story, overcoming barriers and and rising at the end. And that's not what the story is. It's more of a love story, like I said. And I think we really need to embrace and encourage persons who live with a disability to share their stories of life, um, of love, of, you know, it just doesn't have to be the disability. And uh, casting agents, um, writers, um, movie makers, whatever, uh, um, need to further embrace that it can be more than just the disabled story. Uh, just the presence of someone with a disability is enough. Um, it doesn't need to be a soapbox. I'd love to see more of that diverse in storytelling. So I went yeah, on there. <laughs> no, no, you did. And I'm glad you did because what you had to say was very powerful. And I think we understand, you know, we understand that. And especially coming from your point of view, I think you are both an artist and an advocate, but I wonder if your greatest advocacy is to what you write and what you're actually doing and living, you know, and that's where I think you will reach people and people who similar to you may be trying to find their place. And again, you're right back in the good old days, it would be how you would overcome a disability and so on. And I think reading, reading about your life and hearing your TED talk and things like that, you, I think you kind of experienced that too. Did you not like where you thought, when am I going to be fixed? When am I going to be, you know, and, and you had to come to terms with that. Just talk a bit about that. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. I did a TED talk um, uh, a couple of years ago and it was about um, coming of age, like I was 18 or 19. And um, yes, it, it all goes through the, um, 
the belief or the, the false belief that, you know, a disability is something that has to be fixed or, yeah, yeah it's a blemish or something. And, and growing up, I had something like 30 or 35 surgeries growing up and each one was um, designed to improve me, right? Or, or that was my understanding as a child. And, um, and each each time it was it was getting better. I mean, they were designed to to, to make make me uh, more physically mobile and, and life easier in the way of getting around and, and the benefits of that. But it's also the connotation of we have to fix you. And so I grew up with that. Each surgery, I, I was getting better and better. I needed to be fixed was was what stuck with me, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was around eighteen or nineteen, for the most part. Um, all these surgeries had concluded, you know, there was, there was nothing else they could do. And, um, I didn't understand it because, um, I was, I still had a disability and, um, I was like, I'm not fixed yet. And, um, I went to bomb myself to, uh, to, to investigate, uh, other medical, uh, alternatives or whatever of how I could fix myself. Um, of course that, that, that doesn't really exist. And, um, I learned that, um, it was fixing myself within and trying to disregard all those um, past experiences and old time views um, that there was something wrong with me that I needed to be fixed. Yeah. Um, and there was always, it's always, you know, especially when we're teenagers, right? I, I want to be, I want to be, I want to fit in. I want to be normal. I, you know, I want to, and it doesn't just go with someone with a disability, right? I want to have hair like that person. I, I want to, I want to, I don't know. Uh, it still goes on. <laughs> you Definitely. know, but when I watched your TED talk, I'm going to share this because it was, it was your last words on that. And it stayed with me. It was, you said, don't waste your um, every, you know, don't waste your every thought on things you can't change. Use the energy to change the things you can and know the difference. And once you do that, that happy life you're looking for, you'll find it. You, I might've missed a word there, but what you know that's and i think that's truly the message that comes through your play that you know find put your energy in the right right places find what it is that you you want to express and do and be and it, it you know that's essentially what it is we're all people and and that's it <laughs> but it's hard sometimes when you grow up and go through things and but it's amazing you're there and Hey, congratulations on, on your success with the play. And I'm sure people are wanting to know, what, well, I wonder what the play is like. So you're going to share a little bit with us? <laughs> Maybe uh, we're not, we have a little bit of time here. Is there anything perhaps you might like to read and share? I'm sure I'll read it. I have, I have my book here and it's available, available on Breakwater and wherever books are sold. Yeah. So <laughs> there's the plug. I'm just going to uh, show you a picture of, uh, this was from, um, from the play, really clean set. It was beautiful the way you guys worked with the design and the set and how, I don't know, it was just so excellent. <laughs> yeah, the set, you go um, ahead. the set was beautiful. Um, and uh, yeah. I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> there was talented people behind that. <laughs> well, you, well, if you hadn't have written it, there would have been no sets. You did have that's, something that's to do true. with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I should have had this ready. <laughs> Well, that's all right. And I don't want to put you under pressure. If it's not ready, that's okay, too. But a little snippet would be nice. And while you are looking, um, are you going to be producing the the um, play again coming up anytime? Well, we do have uh, the pandemic shut everything down um, for us, mm -hmm. as, as well as everybody else in the arts for a long time. But we do have a date confirmed in Toronto uh with uh, uh theater past um in may of 2022 and i'm hoping that will uh stick off maybe another little round there so uh, we're looking forward to doing that um and also um uh, we're going to have i think to celebrate the uh the, the nomination um uh, a virtual uh celebration of reading i think power productions my company along with breakwater is going to arrange something so look for that now I found I found so a piece a that I, I love to read. <laughs> okay, Tracy Marie, as long as a longtime friend, I continue to be inspired by Paul and your work that you do, and to share so much of your experiences. Thank you so much, Tracy Marie. That's a beautiful comment. And Paul, you do have a fan fan base. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> She's my biggest fan. Thank you, Tracy. I love you. <laughs> okay. All right. 
Uh, this this is a, a little monologue of, um, that I'm sharing about growing up uh, with a disability and the word cripple. Um, everyone knew me. I was little Paul, the cripple boy who lives up the road. No explanation needed. No awkward questions. No steers from strangers. Every day I know what to expect. My parents being overprotective. Neighbors yelling, wait for little Paul, as the other kids ran down to the beach. Everyone putting, as they said, God luck, always getting $5. Yeah, I got $5 because I was special. I used to get hand in money. Walking through a store down the street, adults would just stop and give me $5. I thought it was great. Hey, it's $5. That's a lot of money to a kid, hey? My mom didn't like it. She kept telling me I shouldn't take it. Don't take it. I didn't understand why. Why would I turn down free money? It wasn't until years later I understood why I shouldn't take the money. She was teaching me self-respect. That money was being given out of pity. Ah, uh, that's a sin. Here, here, I'll give him money. It's like being congratulated by someone because you made it into a bar by yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's true. Those were things that 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 happened. And, and the most important part about it is that how it impressed you. But obviously, your mother had a few ideas. And I think your, your parents did. Um, they influenced you in certain ways that did come through in something that I was reading and, and, and so on to give you that that support and that strength to just Yeah, my, my parents, um, yeah, I credit them. I think I credit them for um, they were adamant that I not be treated differently, you know. Um, again, we're going back to the 70s, but, you know, people recommended um, he be, I be put through, um, put in a special school. Um, uh, it was, it was, uh, they, they um, thought my intelligence was lower because I had a disability. So they put him in a special ed class, um, that sort of thing. And uh, my parents would have none of it. Um, they, um, they really instilled in me that drive and that um, determination uh, to be just like everyone else in the way of participation, in the way of um, uh, what I wanted to do for in my life. Um, there was no barriers in that way. And um, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have had that if I wasn't raised the way I was raised. So um, yeah, I, I, I value them and uh, they really paved the road for me and um, you know, uh, I think that's where I got the, I, I just go and do things. Not, I, I, no one's telling me I can't, you know, and I think that's why I got involved in theater. That's why I went out on auditions. That's why I decided to write plays and everything. Um, why, why wouldn't I? And, um, and I've learned through the years, especially when I've gotten to talk to a lot of other disabled artists, um, that, um, that's not the norm. That's not the norm. Um, many, uh, persons with disabilities, um, are, are not are not a, a, a inspired they're 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 not a they're not supported and their their path is already spelt out for them by by false attitudes and so yeah i credit my parents a lot well thank you for that and i hope that people out there watching have heard that message and a very important one and you see the result of it paul i want to thank you so much uh we are out of time i wish we weren't because i feel like we're just getting warmed up that was fast <laughs> We did go fast, but I want to thank you so much for, for coming on and sharing this and wish you every success in that, that upcoming opportunity. But you're going to make your own opportunities. We know that. Anyway, Paul, thank you so much. And um, I just love you. <laughs> thank you so much. It's, it's, a real, it's always a pleasure. And, uh, thank you for taking the time to have me. All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. And stay tuned. We'll have more great shows coming up. Bye now. Mm -hmm.